think right now, there's a lot of things that are coalescing. I think the pandemic put a spotlight on the marginalization of communities in a big, big way. That's now that we're being armed with all this data about what's really involved in the wealth gap and why um, and what happened in 2008, which just really eviscerated um, the wealth of a lot of um, African American um, people. Then I think that as we're becoming more aware and having the data and the writings and uh, you know all those things that are coming out, I think it's bringing in more of a desire to help because I think that a lot of these things, you kind of saw anecdotally things that were happening, but it, it really hasn't been until, as Les said, some of it is the pandemic where it actually affects you or somebody you know. And then some of it is, you know, that people are starting to, you know, to write and publish and raise awareness about the importance of um, home ownership in terms of creating wealth in this country. In a moment where, um, as Marita just said, that I think the whole national conversation about wealth and race is very different from what it was three or four years ago now, that you have you know, stuff like the 1619 Project and The Sum of Us by Heather McGee and all of this new analysis coming out and becoming bestsellers is just something that I can't imagine happening five years ago. So I think now there's a, there's a real window of opportunity to raise this discussion with a lot of people who weren't really paying attention uh, before and still aren't paying enough attention, but you know, we got their ears. The economics of, of gentrification is not just people moving into neighborhoods, but corporations buying huge tracts of, of housing and, and using them speculatively. And that's possible because of the huge accumulation of wealth that's happened at the top end of the economic spectrum. So it's just gotten a lot worse.